Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Melanie. This is Adventures in Hostessville, and welcome to another episode of the Vintage Magazine Project. Today, we are going to be looking at the November 1973 Mother Earth News. So Mother Earth News is a magazine that is still around, but in 1973 it was really pretty new. And it is, as they say, a publication edited by and for today's turned on people of all ages. Heavy emphasis is placed on alternative lifestyles, ecology, working with nature, and doing more with less. In other words, this is a magazine for hippies. So the article I want to take a look at today is just this opening section called Dear Mother, which is basically their letters to the editor. And it's largely people writing in to ask about how you take care of chickens or um, the one cow family meets the one family cow. There's a real sort of back to the land movement happening at this people and people are moving out to homestead. People are having like, communes in the country to go back to the land where they don't really know what they're doing. So this magazine is the internet, basically. Carol from Rural Route 1 in Troopsburg, New York says, I've got a terrific recipe for health food candy. It's called tahini candy and requires no cooking. I copied this recipe from a Zen cookbook about three years ago. If anyone can give me the title and author, I'd really like to hear from you. So in 1973, when this magazine comes out, there is this commune called the One World Family Commune. And the way that they support themselves is through their vegetarian restaurants that they run. And in fact, one of their schools of experience that they have for their kids is the raw candy factor. And this commune is like just a really basic standard what you think of commune, except they also believe in UFOs. Okay, so the first thing that I need is two tablespoons of tahini buddy. Buddy, don't growl. Um, so I'm living in my own commune now. You may have noticed I've got this different background because I've moved again. I'm a total nomad and I'm staying with my sister and her um, husband, Fong, and... Buddy the dog. Hey, buddy. We're going to make candy. Stop growling. Mm. OK, so the One World Family Commune is founded in 1967 by this guy, Alan Noonan, who is later known as Alan Michael. And he's actually kind of old to be part of the whole like flower child thing. He was actually born in 1916 and he's a really smart kid. His parents have this electronics store and he figures out a way to attach a camera and alarm clock to a kite so that he can take aerial photos of things. He also is a really good artist. He wins like the local poster contest and he is a really good runner. In fact, he gets a track scholarship to Drake University. He only goes for a year before he drops out and I only mention it because I also went to Drake. Go Bulldogs. But he becomes a sign painter. He decides that's what he's going to do. And then in the 40s, he is drafted into World War II. He is a big pacifist. That part does play into the flower child thing. And he registers in World War II as a conscientious objector. Oh, I'm making a terrible mess. Um, anyway, he gets stationed in Africa painting camouflage onto tanks. That's what he does. And when he gets out of the army, he moves to California. He gets married. He has some kids. And then in 1947, he's painting this sign when all of the sudden he is enveloped in this ultraviolet light connected by golden threads and he is taken up into a UFO. And when he gets there, he finds out that the people who have taken him, the, the beings who have taken him, are part of the galactic Elohim. So they are basically um, God as a galactic extraterrestrial thing. Like, and maybe God is actually just actually the Milky Way galaxy. There are a lot of writings, and I wasn't able to read them all. But that's the general idea. And they told him, like, hey, you are basically the Archangel Michael. And that's when he changes his name from Alan Noonan to Alan Michael. And then suddenly he says, yep, I'm in. I'll do it. He reappears on Earth, and he turns to his buddies who are painting the sign with him, and he's like, you guys, 
what was that? And they're like, we have no idea what you're talking about. You just fell over. And he's like, I'm going to need the rest of the day off. So he goes and he tells his wife, Marion, I think is her name, she appears to not be super into being married to uh, the Archangel Michael, and they are divorced within a few months. Fortunately, in the early 50s, he has another interaction with these aliens in the Mojave Desert. Good place for it. He doesn't actually talk to them. He just sees them sort of like on the front porch of their spaceship and they're blowing him kisses. But through ESP, he is able to understand what they want him to do and that is to found a coffee shop. So the place he founds is called the House of Meditation and it's your typical 1950s beatnik coffee shop, right? They've got coffee, but they've also got a place for people to play guitar and sing and stuff. In fact, one of the people who got their start at the House of Meditation is Jackson Brown. Um, it doesn't last a real long time. He's just, you know, he's just kind of out of time and place a little bit. But then the 60s come around and ultimately he opens a vegetarian restaurant in San Francisco called The Here and Now. And it is the workers largely, and some visitors to this restaurant that become the beginnings of his commune, the One World Family. So the One World Family actually doesn't spend a lot of their time in San Francisco. They, um, they never own their properties, and there's a lot of sort of distrust of hippies and communes, especially after 1969 when Charles Manson ruins it for everybody. So they end up opening another restaurant called The Mustard Seed in Marin County, and then after that they go and have their largest and longest running one, which is the One World Family Natural Foods Restaurant in Berkeley. They also have their own bakery in there where they make honey whole wheat sunflower bread, of course, and they have a pizzeria, which is cool. They also have this clothing store, because let us not forget that Alan Michael is an artist, and they have these handmade clothes that have airbrushed UFOs on them, uh, and the name of their store is Far Outfits. By the way, did you notice my Far Outfit? It has pockets. They're shaped like hearts. I made it myself. Okay, there's mushrooms. All right. Oh, and speaking of mushrooms... <laughs> What would a commune be without sex, drugs, and rock and roll? And the One World family has all three of them. Now I need a half a cup of creamed honey. Oh dear. Um, this is very thick. The nature's potions are marijuana, magic mushrooms, peyote, and LSD, which does not exist in nature, but you know, I don't want to nitpick. So they have this band called Quasar with a Z. I listened to it on YouTube. It's, it's, it's not the Beatles. But where it really gets good is when Alan Michael does his spoken word pieces because it's just like him reading some of his channelings from the extraterrestrials, but then it's somebody's like, well, I got an auto harp. And somebody else is like, I just discovered this thing called reverb. And Alan Michael is like, yes. So the sex part. This one apparently was actually kind of tough for some of the members, even because Originally, it, sex wasn't really part of this commune, but one day Alan Michael is like, okay, this is what we're gonna do now. And he called it natural selection, and it was this sort of like tantric sex kind of thing. I mean, they said, you know, they'd go in and it had, um, you know, soft lighting and candles and music, so like they're trying to get in the mood or whatever. But they would, the women would sit in a circle, naked, and then the men would sit opposite them, and then in a like very bizarre, like sexy musical chairs kind of way, they would sort of stroke and caress the person across from them until the song was over, and then the women would get up and like move over. After they'd made a full circle, then they can move on to more intimate things than just caressing. 
And again, like the idea is not for it to be taxi where everybody's getting off all the time. It's about, they say it was about exchanging hormones and energies and improving telepathic connection or something like that. So, okay. This seems very dry. I don't know. I'm about to put more dry stuff in it because it's time for the hippiest of all ingredients, carob powder. I went to the co-op to buy this and I couldn't find it because it's not an ingredient I use a lot. But I was surprised that they, that they didn't have it in bulk because it seems like the Venn diagram of people who want to buy things in bulk and people who want to buy carob powder, that Venn diagram is just a circle, right? So as far as their belief systems go, they really were this sort of Christian funneled through aliens but falling pretty heavily on the communism scale thing. They all work for the commune, um, but they're not like work shifts, they're love service. And then they just took all of the money that came in from these endeavors and pooled it evenly amongst everybody. And every Monday they would have a meeting to say, okay, what do we need to pay for and let's deal with it. And you know, it's a commune. Okay, so now I'm supposed to roll this into a log. I gotta be honest, it's very crumbly and it doesn't seem like it wants to be in a log. Um, that's a lot of carob in my hair. Okay. Well, anyway, I, I, maybe it just needs to be kneaded and the warmth of my hands um, and, and the galactic Elohim will allow it to be a log. So in 1973, the One World Family Commune officially becomes the Universal Industrial Church of the New World Comforter. And New World Comforter is a term from the Bible, as I understand it. I have read the Bible. I've read the whole thing. I've read every word of it, but I haven't memorized it, which Alan Michael did memorize, like, giant chunks of it. He is their conduit on Earth, but, like, Baal Lucifer kind of character has a conduit as well, and that is, of course, the International Monetary Fund, the Federal Reserve, and the CIA. I don't know if this is going to be a, a log. It doesn't look particularly appetizing. So the way that the church is going to get their message out to the world is that they now have decided we're going to focus less on our vegetarian restaurant and more on our publishing company. They form this publication house called Starmast Publications. And the first thing that they publish is a book called To the Youth of the World by Alan Michael. Everybody will buy this book and then all the countries will get along and there will be no more war and we'll, we'll be in utopia. That's not what happened. You may have noticed we don't live in utopia, unfortunately. But they, the next book that they put out really was actually pretty successful because they put out a cookbook called Cosmic Cookery, but that's not what they wanted to focus on. They wanted to focus on his teachings. And so he decided the next best way to get his message out to the masses was to run for president of the United States. So, in 1980, well past the height of the popularity of communes, in the first place, Alan Michael decides he's going to run for president, and he forms a political party called the Utopian Synthesis Party. And his platform is basically get rid of money. We're also going to forgive all debt in the first place. And then he's got this thing called the 30-30 plan. And what the 30-30 plan is, is that for 30 days, half of the country will, will work. And then at the end of that 30 days, they will take the next 30 days off and rest while the other half of the country works. I've heard worse platforms from a lot of politicians. Unfortunately, the general public didn't either get that message or just didn't agree with it and overwhelmingly decided to vote for Ronald Reagan instead, who is the opposite of getting rid of money. This just fell off. I don't understand how this is supposed to stick together. Carol! Ugh. 
So ultimately, they leave Berkeley. They get rid of the restaurant. The houses they were living in were actually two old frat houses at the University of California, Berkeley, because the late 60s, early 70s was not like a great era for Greek life. That's not really what college kids at UCAL Berkeley were doing. So the, the college was renting out a lot of these empty Greek house, houses, which was perfect for a commune because you've got all these different little bedrooms, but then you've got this sort of like cafeteria style kitchen. Well, the college ultimately sold those houses and the commune moved to a mansion in Stockton. But ultimately people just sort of left the commune. And in 2010, Alan Michael dies at the age of 93 at which point there are still four people living in the commune. Sound, sound is astonishing because it sounds in space. Where does it come from and where does it go? Time and illusion, sound not related to the time it seems to take. Let's see. Okay. So a thing that, that I feel needs to be taken into account is that I'm, I'm not really much of a candy eater. I have a very big sweet tooth. So this would probably not seem very sweet to a person who enjoys like a Snickers or something. To me, it seems very sweet. But God knows the honey was the only thing holding anything together, so... This is the exact candy embodiment of how I feel about the One World Family Commune and the Universal Industrial Church of the New World Comforter. A lot of it I really like. Some of it's just kind of too much for me personally, but I can see why other people would like it. And it's absolutely not hurting anybody. That's it for this episode. Listen, if there's any chance that you are watching this and you once belonged to the One World Family Commune? First off, if I got anything wrong, I'm really sorry. Um, but also, I think you're, you're awesome and I would love to hear from you and hear anything that you have to say because like, good for you guys and don't I wish that we were all living in utopia. But we're not. So candy it is. We cannot share the world. Buddy doesn't really care how the candy turned out. <laughs>